Hi, that was a beautiful applause. Uh, so former GOP candidate and presidential uh, runner, Herman Cain, who said, people are fed up with the stupid mask thing, died from COVID today. RIP to him. He is survived by people who now believe just the opposite. Let's start the show. <laughs> In a cabin going crazy cause the flu that's worse than swine swept the planet so damn it here we are in quarantine we've been quarreling we've been snarling oh my darling wife of mine it's a toilet paper zombie apocalypse so we're here in quarantine hello and welcome to virtual comedy show here are some etiquette guidelines for virtual comedy show please arrive 15 minutes early that way you can make sure your stream is solid and prepare your home to be quiet except for laughing and clapping of course facebook and instagram sometimes chime when you get a message these chimes are audible to everyone in the virtual comedy show so please turn off notifications and all other sounds on your device don't know how google it that's why you're here 15 minutes early though we love kids and pets a comedy club is not a good place for them they don't understand the need for quiet and the jokes are not intended for them especially cats no sense of humor at all please no pets or kids at the virtual comedy show please don't heckle or chat at your table it's more fun for you if you can hear others laugh and more fun for others if they can hear you laugh so keep your mic on and laugh all you like but with 100 mics on we may hear coughing or barking dogs or screaming babies or attacking zombies and this can easily drown out the comedian please place your phone or other device six feet from you so we don't hear every breath you take and mute your device if your area becomes filled with noisy zombie dog babies and once you vanquish those zombies unmute yourself if you're not sure how ask us via the chat system aka typing and we will help you we would like to see your face as part of the audience let's be social not just distant we've all been in our pajamas for weeks no one will judge your hair we promise so get comfortable plan to laugh but not heckle and let's make our strange quarantine world a bit more normal for a little while thanks and enjoy the virtual comedy show hey everyone it's time for the virtual comedy show starring brad tassel and steve goody Tonight, Brad and Steve welcome their very special guest, Mark Evans, from their respective quarantined homes. And now, please welcome Brad Tesso. Yay! Okay, not much from the crowd. Well, I hope <laughs> I'm not freezing too much because that's what I see. So give me a thumbs up if you can hear me even though I'm freezing. I can hear you mostly well. Okay, yes. mostly well. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I've already been told I'm non-essential to the show and my <laughs> outfit is ugly. So we're going to do something special. Uh, I got a call. Well, I didn't get a call. My mom got a call from Jeff Shaw's mom about an hour ago. And she complained that she goes to bed early. She can't see Jeff doing his one-minute thing. And he has to go early. So ladies and gentlemen, right now, Jeff Shaw. One minute with Jeff Shaw. Hi, everybody. Uh, Hi, the great Jeff. thing about sounding like your mother, mother, you can fake a phone call to Brad's mother. When, when. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. I'm Jeff. And with all the talk of kids going back to school, I read that a lot of schools are going to have child psychologists standing by to help kids get through uh, COVID. And, uh, and I don't know if that's a good idea because kids who go to counseling and therapy tend to be well-adjusted and happy. And that's no way to go through childhood. <laughs> mm. <laughs> the kid is watching your parents ignore your red flags the way our president ignores security briefings. <laughs> <laughs> I was a very neurotic child. Some kids had an imaginary friend. I had an imaginary therapist. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I grew up in the 70s before caring about children was a thing. <laughs> Parents didn't care about their child's mental health back in the 70s. I hear voices, Mama. Good. Maybe they'll tell you to clean your room. <laughs> A teacher today are in tune with children's emotional needs, and they're very attentive. Back in the 70s, teachers were clueless, and they were quick to judge. Bad reader? Well, you'll never amount to anything. Bad at math? You'll never amount to anything. In desperate need of counseling and therapy? Well, you just might grow up to be a comedian. <laughs> Yay! Jeff Shaw, everybody! Let's hear it for him. Jeff Shaw making his mom 
happy. All right, go do your thing that you have to do. Well, let's hope that my feed is better now as it I is. do jokes not as funny as that. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Are you ready for this? Uh, first of all, the first thing, Dr. Stella Emanuel, right? We loved her this week. She held a press conference that went viral with what looked like a low budget film when hired to play doctors and what seemed to be a porn star in a lab coat. I don't know if you saw her. Uh, Dr. Emanuel touted the miracle of a hydroxychloroquine, saying it saved many lives where she seems to be from, which is Westeros from Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay. okay, too much, too much. Uh, no, it's she, perfect. Nobody knows that Game of Thrones. Okay, she has other YouTube videos saying gynecological problems are caused by having sex with demons and witches in your dreams, and science is making a vaccine to stop people being religious. Science replied, you're doing a good enough job yourself. <laughs> now... Yeah. Emmanuel also preaches that reptiles are running the government, which oddly I agree with, and that children's television teaches witchcraft. Asked for his medical opinion of Emmanuel's statements, I love her, said Dr. Bombay from Bewitched. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow. There's a reference, excellent. right? Yeah. I went deep. Excellent. Yeah, I got an excellent thing. Oh, it's Joel Madison, everybody. Yay! Say hi, Joel. Nobody can see him, but I said hi to Joel. So that, so Joel, like you're Joel. a writer of sitcoms. Was that a good joke? That's a great joke. Okay, let's try again. Regis Philbin, this mm. one won't be good. Regis Philbin passed away this week, not from COVID, but a heart attack that occurred when he yelled, Gelman, too loud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Too old, too old. Okay, uh, too soon. Oh, oh, Ellen, too soon. Ellen kind of liked it. <laughs> Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe Biden made a gaffe saying 150 million people have died from COVID. To his credit, he immediately noticed and said, I'm sorry, I meant trillion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's pretty good, right? Okay, great. Uh, hey, and if you, you think you've got problems, inmates who fight wildfires in California will not be able to do so this year because of COVID. Uh, and that means many more homes will burn down with their valuables still in them. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Ellen, Ellen's looking confused. <laughs> See, Ellen, the joke is they were stealing the valuables, then the houses burned down. So people oh. didn't know they lost it. Okay, that was <laughs> not going well. Okay. <laughs> hey, how about this? By the way, everybody at Facebook making saying mean things, I don't see it. Uh, and movie star Olivia de Havilland died at 104, leaving millions to wonder how the hell she lived so long. Uh, she played Maid Marian, and I have to read this one, so I'm not going to look at the camera. She played Maid Marian, Maid Marian in uh, the Errol Flynn version of Robin Hood, which is a story of how a racially profiled and subjugated group of protesters are killed and harassed by unmarked thuggish government troops sent by a fake religious, greedy, selfish leader because just they wanted the same rights as the ruling class. So it's a very far-fetched, uh, you know, plot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I had other tags for that that were a lot shorter. And the other tag I had was she was in Robin Hood, which the original title was Portland 2020. Ah. <laughs> that was better? Okay. So thanks. I should have, okay. So by the way, Florida will suspend corona testing due to the impending storm. Uh, not the hurricane, the storm of angry voters who are realizing that governor is killing people. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> wow. Okay, that hurts. Martha Christian, <laughs> not happy about that joke. Okay, well, let's uh, look around and see if anything's funny. Okay, Steve, I'm going to try the joke. Are you okay. ready? I'm ready. Okay. Let's go. Advocates say closing Catholic schools is devastating because priests have so little access to boys at mass anymore. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Gilman. Okay. Okay, well, I've only got like seven more. Here we go. Martha, get ready, you're gonna have to say this. Martha Christian's gonna have to say this. Trump said that he uh, turned down the Yankees to throw out the first pitch. The Yankees said they never asked him. Also, Trump, 
will be contacting Mensa to turn them down because he said he doesn't get a period. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> He's out of control. <laughs> There's just so much pride right now. <laughs> okay. One more. Because it's, uh, I think Jeff screwed all this up. One more. <laughs> Trump has finally started saying people should wear a mask. Mike Pence, on the other hand, will stick with the same beard he's always had. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> That'd be his wife. Yeah. All right, I'm looking around. I got four more up here, and I think no. Oh, no, nope, I'm going to do this one. I'm doing it. Martha, I know you're ready, but I'm doing this one. Here we this go. Time. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Ah. Singer Drake, you all know Drake from Degrassi High, oh, yeah. became a singer, producer. Mm. He found Justin Bieber, oddly enough. He took possession of two Tupac Jesus pendants that he commissioned from a Beverly Hills jeweler. Uh, in the spirit of the Savior, they are encrusted with diamonds and worth 300000 apiece. Uh, and as the Bible said, that's exactly how Jesus wanted you to spend money, was to make diamond-encrusted Tupac Jesus medallions. Uh, the only thing I don't have a problem with is they look like Tupac, because he probably looked more like Jesus than the white guy that is uh, that we see. Okay, I, I bailed on the rest of that joke, because uh, I was looking at faces, and they were about to turn their thing off. Okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen... We have a very special guest. Let's get me out of this. Uh, Martha, are you ready? Oh, I had a feeling that was coming. <laughs> what? Wait, wait a minute. So, so wait, what are you saying? You don't want to follow that. Uh, uh, you know, I'm ready for just about anything right now. All right. Ladies this and is gentlemen, great. she looks lovely. This is Martha Christian. She is uh, a I singer, a songwriter. Hey. She's won Her. two Grammys. Uh, and a <laughs> prophecy. We'll say those are coming. They are... <laughs> I mean, Grammys as in your grandmother uh, says you're great twice. Oh, she said you're yes. great. Three times. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lovely song by the lovely Martha Christian. Go. Yay. Well, Brad, I just want to thank you for letting me come on the show and talk about some really serious issues because that's what we need in comedy is serious issues. So, um, you know, right now everybody's talking about wearing the masks and absolutely I think we need to wear the mask and if you don't know why go ahead and google why we should wear a mask and that i think more the truth will win out there but um there's a couple things that we've forgotten about uh talking that are as essential as wearing the mask so um mm -hmm. your friend has written this song for me to sing for you all and i hope you sing along <laughs> 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 and it goes a little bit like this. Just sing along once you catch on. Whoa, 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 wash your hands. Wash your hands. Whoa, 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 wash your hands as hot as you can stand it. Wash your hands and sing the ABCs. Wash your hands and get yourself germ free. Wash your hands. Your hands. Your hands. Whoa, 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 wash your, wash your hands. This is the important part. Do not touch your eyes. <laughs> Do not touch your eyes. It's how the viruses survive. The best way is hand to eyes. Do not touch your nose. Do not touch your nose. It's how bacteria starts to grow and everybody needs to know. Everybody now. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wash, wash hands. your hands as hot as you can stand it. Wash your hands after you use some loo. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wash your hands to save me and you. Wash your hands, wash your hands, whoa, 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 wash your, wash your hands. And do not touch your mouth, <laughs> do not touch your mouth, it helps some nasty stuff sprout, <laughs> and your mommy warned about it. Go on now, wash your hands, whoa, whoa, wash your hands, whoa, 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 wash your hands. Hot as you can stand it, whoa, whoa, wash your hands, you gotta tell your friends. Wash your hands if the disease don't spread. Wash your hands, wash your hands. Whoa, 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 wash your, wash your hands. 
So push the door open with the shoulder or pull it open with your little pinky. Then punch the elevator buttons, knuckles only, just before you eat and after you. you I mean, you guys get the point. We're just <laughs> wash your hands, wash your hands, so wash your hands. Stand and bubble, wash your hands. You gotta tell your friends. Wash your hands so that the teeth don't spread. Wash your hands, wash your hands. Whoa, 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 wash your, wash your hands. One more time, all together, we say, wash, wash, wash your, your hands, hands. Wash your hands. Whoa, 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 wash your, wash your hands. Yay! Woo! Your hands. Martha Christian, everybody, that take a look awesome. at her. Her awesome. hair is different colors. <laughs> wash your <laughs> hair. Wash your hair. Wash your hair. Wash your <laughs> hair. So, so is that like fudge ripple? What do you got going there? It's like mocha and caramel. It's, it's Neapolitan. Like, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Okay. Now you need a red for Neapolitan, don't you? There's red in there. There's red. There's oh, red. There's red. Wow. That's very good. So, it's Martha, weird. what do you do? You're you're the youth pastor. Where? How can people come see leader. you? <laughs> I'm the worship leader at uh, Broadway Methodist Church, and then I'm a singer songwriter. And you can find me at MarthaChristian.com or any of your social media networks. But yeah, so I I uh, I like to have a real good time. Okay, so on <laughs> bathroom walls everywhere, MarthaChristian.com. Have a good time. So <laughs> I'd like to point out, if I may, that song was mostly written by my friend Heidi Hutner. I helped a little bit, but it's mostly Heidi, and I will let her know that she needs to watch this show because I don't think she realizes somebody's <laughs> covering her song. That's awesome. Yeah, Heidi. Yes. So Tell the Heidi cash. I love the song. Mm -hmm. The cash mm -hmm. is going to roll in for Heidi Hutner. Let's hear it again, Martha. I mean, Martha <laughs> Christian, everybody. Come on. <laughs> that was incredible. That was amazing. That was really Okay, good. so Steve, I'm switching it up this week. Usually I would have gone to you first. But I went to Martha to I get get us going. Yeah, good call. All right. By the so way, I think you look go... great, and I think you look awesome. Don't you listen okay, to people thanks. give you a hard time. By the way, uh, right before this happened, I sent uh, Steve fifty dollars on Cash App, so that's that was nice. True. All right, Steve, go. I would like to know where you got $50. It doesn't matter. All right. Hi, everybody. It's time for our weekly top 10 list. Now, like most of you probably know, tomorrow, July 31st, is a very special day because it is the birthday of two important people, J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter. And does anybody, can anybody tell me how old Harry Potter would be turning if he was not fictional this year? Can anybody take a guess? I'll just 47. tell you. 40. He was born in 1980. He would be turning 40 tomorrow. Can you believe that? And look what he's done with his life. Anyway, that's why I'm wearing black tonight. It's an all-wizarding top 10 list. Tonight's top 10 list, the category from the home office in, uh, at Hogwarts, is top 10 ways Dumbledore would handle a pandemic. As you know, different people have different opinions on what the best way to handle things is. But if we had a real Dumbledore running things, I think this is pretty much how it would go. Uh, top 10 ways Dumbledore would handle a pandemic. Number 10. Provide stimulus so that homeowners can pay off their Volda mortgage. <laughs> oh. Oh. I know, and that's the best one. Number nine. <laughs> Everyone stays alone in a cupboard under the stairs for three weeks. Crisis over. <laughs> that was the best one. I like that one. Number eight. <laughs> Have Madame Pomfrey design and replicate masks that repel viruses, curses, dragons, and stupid conspiracy theories. <laughs> Number seven, have Hagrid keep the virus as a pet. Crisis over. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Number six, try radical new treatment, hydroxychloroquidditch, on the Malfoy family. It didn't work. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Number five, speaking of Quidditch, start up the Quidditch season just to shut it down three days later. Not. <laughs> yeah. Woo. <laughs> Number four, house elves can fix anything. Throw socks at the problem. You have to be a Harry Potter fan to get that one at all. Again, the, the category is top 10 ways Dumbledore would handle a pandemic. Number three, um, magic, hello. <laughs> Number two, send the students home for crying out loud and finally get it on with Snape like he's been dreaming about all these years. <laughs> Ooh. I know, that's edgy. And the number one way Dumbledore would handle a pandemic, new Hogwarts cheer. Open the school, orphans rule. Thank you, Betty DeVos. Not. 
Okay. That was good. <laughs> Steve Goody, everybody. Let's hear it for him. Steve Goody. Yay for me. Hello, Nina. Everybody in Facebook hi. land, say hi to Steve. Yeah, By hang way, on Steve, one second, uh, okay, Steve. Steve. So, all right, somebody, uh, somebody's somebody's oh, that was that was Joel taking over the show. So uh he's our he's our comedian for next week, Joel Madison. He came to uh, come in this week. So so Steve, in a little while, we're gonna have a special world second premiere. That's true. That we'll talk about later. Uh, hey, by the way, uh, Mark Yaffe hopefully stayed and hasn't left because of all this. Mark, are you still here? Yes, he is. Oh, I see him right there. Well, of course. I'm soaking up this variety extravaganza. <laughs> oh, 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 man. The dripping with sarcasm. Hey, by the way, I forgot a joke. You ready? So, oh, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring things down to a real low roar and then bring Mark up. Trump has called for it. This happened today. Trump has called for a delay to the 2020 election until measures are put in place that ensure every person who votes has taken hydroxychloroquine first. <laughs> oh. All, right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Close. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest. He is pretty famous. He's a huge comedian around the world. He uh, works all over. You've been on Last Comic Stand. Wait, well, I just forgot. You were, you've been on... Uh, I get to uh, do a uh, Showtime special called Going Native, uh, first yes. of all, Native American stand-up special. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else? Uh, FNX, another Native network. Um, and what else? Uh, PBS. Um, oh, probably, cool. They did a special about mixed-race comedians, but I'm not, like, full blood. So I'm getting, a, uh, I'm getting a thing that you're somehow Native American in some way. Yeah, I'm picking that up, too. That's called my bio. Brad really does his research before I really. <laughs> I didn't read anything. I just remember we worked together about 20 years ago, and I think we co-headlined. And by the second show, they were like, "No, Mark's closing." And uh, I thought, real quick, Brad, you slept. He slept through a spin out on the I-80 in Montana during the snowstorm. I bounced off the center divider. Rental car does a 360. Still made it to the gig only an hour and a half late, and the guy still talks to me. So I, I love this guy. And thanks for having well, me. Well, but on. I didn't notice. I didn't notice until it was about over. It was like I was out. And by the way, I was driving. No, I was out. And uh, and when it was over, but again, still safer than I would be. And the weather was horrible. Horrible. Yeah, but so he, the Indiana guy, the Midwest guy, goes to sleep. The guy that knows the drive is slow. And has the Californian from L.A. driving in the snow. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but you worked up there a ton. You worked up there a ton, didn't you? Well, not in that weather. I tried to keep it. That's to true. I was, yeah, I was the guy that would have been better driving. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, he's an incredible comedian. Works all over the world. Let's hear it for Mark Yaffe. Go talk, Mark, for 10 minutes. So much, brother. Thanks, Brad and Martha and Jeff and Steve. It's uh, great to be on here, man. I actually just got back from visiting my parents uh, over in California for the first time in three months. And I gotta say, California shoppers are uh, doing a great job keeping social distance. Uh, California drivers, uh, not so good on the following distance. <laughs> People are six feet away in the stores, six inches away on the freeway. <laughs> in other states, in, other, in our other states, other 49 states, people will shame you for not wearing a mask. In California, they will shame you for wearing the wrong mask. I'm like, uh, excuse me, sir, that doesn't appear to be a fair trade, sustainably harvested, eco-friendly, 100% organic cotton mask hand-woven in a Bolivia feminist women's collective. You're going to have to wait outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my parents uh, went to visit them in the, the Bay Area for their uh, anniversary. I had a nice visit. We kept our uh, social and emotional distance. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I promise not to give you COVID if you promise not to give me grief about quitting law school. <laughs> <laughs> they had their 66th wedding anniversary, uh, July 17th. 66 years. Their marriage now qualifies for Social Security. <laughs> <laughs> And I asked my mom her secret to a long marriage. She goes, communication. I asked my dad his secret to a long marriage. He goes, hearing loss. Awesome. <laughs> 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 yeah. 93 and 90. So, man, they're still going. 93 and 90. 
They're so old, they think Joe Biden is too young to be president. <laughs> <laughs> and they both, check this out, you guys, they both lived through the stock market crash of 1929. So they do not waste a nickel of money or scrap of food. If you have elders in your family, you know these people, right? I took my mom to IHOP before COVID hit. Yeah. I took her to IHOP for breakfast. She wanted a to-go box for the parsley sprig and the orange slice. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Look at their house. Their fridge is like a food museum. Last time I was there, I found a piece of white 2 cake. <laughs> <laughs> hey. My mom marked me a peach. The fuzz had become a full beard. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking around the fridge. I found this box. I said, Mom, what is that uh, styrofoam box down at the bottom shelf with the bamboo sprouts shooting out? She goes, Oh, that's Chan's Chinese Kitchen. I'm like, Mom, they closed in 2016. <laughs> 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 You're at it, Dr. Seuss. Throw out that green eggs and ham. <laughs> <laughs> Those don't seem safe. <laughs> my, my parents would, they're going to find a Dr. Seuss sequel. Like, you can't eat this candy bar. Those from this jar. You can't eat this mayonnaise. It's been expired months, not days. <laughs> They're black as you can see. Just one would kill both you and me. <laughs> oh. Oops. Did he get muted? Yeah. I got muted. Am I back? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it says you've been muted by the host. I said, I don't think Brad liked that joke. <laughs> I did not mute you. <laughs> I did not. Okay. Well, the screen said the host, but I won't, I won't hold it against you. But it's anyway, yeah, this, but my parents are the Dr. Seuss. It's like, uh, these eggs are black, this meat is it's bread is stale. You, they wouldn't serve this food in jail. <laughs> you the in the basket, you'll be laying inside a casket. <laughs> So we went out, went and played some uh, senior socially distanced bingo. Uh, yeah, uh, senior bingo, a little different than regular bingo, everybody. And senior bingo, when the bingo call yells out O2, everybody puts on their oxygen mask. <laughs> <laughs> and feisty, those seniors are feisty, I'll tell you what. The bingo caller yells out, oh, I'm 68. Late in the back yelled out, bull crap, you're 85. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course, it's a community, so you know they have passages. Books are old and move on. The, the newsletter they reported that one of their neighbors um, died unexpectedly at age ninety-four. Yeah, that was a shocker. They should have lived unexpectedly seventeen years past the average age of American male. <laughs> <laughs> my mom checks up my mom researching uh, final arrangement. She found out they now manufacture talking headstones where the person before they pass can record uh, digitally record their voice to play on a, uh, a motion activated uh, digital recorder. Are you kidding me? This lady has been lecturing me to death for the last fifty years. Now she's going to be lecturing me after death for another 50 years. <laughs> it's, it's ironic, too, because this, this lady, my mom wants to use technology in the afterlife. She can't figure it out in her current life. Yes. She <laughs> bought her a cell phone four years ago. She has yet to complete one successful call. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, my poor parents, they, they just missed out on the technology revolution. We think eBay is a harbor in Florida. They think a text message is a note in a history book. <laughs> but like the seniors, you notice like the seniors, the older they get, the more they love slot machines. love the high def, the high tech slot machines, like the ones with the HD screen with the high back chairs and the built in speakers so you can hear yourself lose in stereo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm here because I, I live in Nevada now, right? The casinos are reopened. Uh, they're, they're actually big casino reopened. Totally changed since COVID. So you're, you're subject to it's all strict social distancing and and massive sanitation everywhere. And every every staff member that waits on you is in protective gear while you're bleeding cash and wondering what the hell's wrong with you. It's just like being in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> had a ventilator. Yes. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not, they're probably giving them away now. That's, that's how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> I worked in, speaking of ventilators, there's my uh, segue. Thanks. But I worked in a lot of the battle right now. Have you guys been a lot from Vegas on life support? If you're not familiar with Laughlin, it's located like one hour and 37 years from the Las Vegas Strip. Ah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a casino in Laughlin is like a medical center with slot machines. <laughs> People with IV drips, heart monitors. I saw a guy roll by in a gurney holding a keno card. Are we here to gamble? Is there a medical conference about to start? <laughs> <laughs> If they love their food in Laughlin. They love to eat. I don't know what's going to happen without buffets now. Laughlin, crazy. I've seen one bar fight in my adult life. I have seen three dessert bar fights in Laughlin. <laughs> 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 yeah. Evidently, the last piece of uh, chocolate cream pie is mine is fighting words in Laughlin. <laughs> <laughs> it's a goofy state if you've been in Nevada. We're the only state with 24-hour gambling, 24-hour prostitution, 24-hour marijuana. Or legalized prostitution, legalized marijuana. I'm like, there are state models. You can get your money. We're getting your money one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> the Nevada is the only state where you get drunk at 4 a.m., uh, go to a brothel at 5 a.m., and wake up, uh, then go pick up weed at 6 a.m., or as my neighbor calls it, get uh, work. True. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I moved to Reno area in 2011, uh, which proves one thing, you're never too old to keep making bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> My fiance and I, we bought a house uh, right outside Reno in uh, Sparks, Nevada, back in the, uh, just past January. And now we're uh, Comcast Xfinity. These people, these guys are calling every 17 seconds. They're texting their voice. Uh, Voice message or knocking on my door. Finally, I called them. I said, "Hey, uh, if I uh, sign up for your uh, bundled uh, cable package, how long will it take to get uh, my internet installed?" They're like, "About uh, 15 seconds." Our driver's right across the street with the binoculars trained on your house. Here, <laughs> <laughs> uh, They recommended that uh, if Americans plant a victory garden to help get us through COVID. Victory garden. You guys heard about this? I planted a victory garden uh, in my backyard in May. Uh, surrendered in June. <laughs> I gave up faster than the French in World War II. <laughs> they couldn't stop a Nazi invasion. I couldn't stop an aphid invasion. <laughs> I spent $275 to grow $12 worth of bug infested beets. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't such a bad deal after all. <laughs> 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 and and Brad, keep an eye on my timer. I got a lot. I didn't set my alarm. You're done. Well, whenever you're done is fine. You're great. Right. Good night. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do one more. One more. No, we'll keep going a little longer. I got to get my. I got to. I got to get some things off my chest here. You know, it's been COVID up. So I've been doing some cooking. I don't know if you guys are familiar. I've been doing some vegan cooking. I don't even like vegan food, but the nice thing is if you do a crappy job, you can just blame it on the fake meat. It <laughs> <laughs> must have been the taste just like lamb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here, here's a pro tip. Here's a pro tip about Sparks, Nevada, everybody. Uh, if you move to a city named after a dragging muffler, it's going to lean a little bit redneck. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Our neighbors are all about camo and ammo. <laughs> our neighbors, our hunters have a hummingbird season. <laughs> but my neighbors, they're, they're like a bougie first generation just out of the trailer park rednecks. So like they keep their spare fridge on the back patio instead of the front porch. <laughs> <laughs> They'll stick an old wood stove in the front lawn and stuff it with geranium still. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure what all my neighbors do for a living. The average wage in the Reno Sparks area is like sixteen fifty an hour, but somehow everyone in my neighborhood has managed to purchase a forty thousand dollar truck and hundred thousand dollar RV. So I don't know if they're Walter Whiting it back in their airstream or running guns up <laughs> cargo trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
suspicions in that. They're a little suspicious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're suspicious of me because I am the only adult in a five mile radius not driving a pickup truck, which makes me the neighborhood outcast. <laughs> and I drive the Prius, which makes me the neighborhood communist. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> they look at my car like it just escaped from a lab in Wuhan. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put it this way. In closing, I could mount a gun to my roof, uh, an American flag, a don't tread on me flag, a NASCAR flag, an NRA flag. I could have Baron Trump selling lemonade on my front lawn. It would all be canceled out by, by 2013 Prius, a.k.a. the mark of the beast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, bro. Thank you guys. Hey, come on. Let's hear it for everybody. Dan Mark. Mark Yaffe. Yay. So you live in uh, 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 Reno now? Yep. Sparks uh, right next to Reno. Yeah, I've been here. Right. For Why did you choose this? It's called zero income tax. Oh, okay. Well, but why? Isn't the whole state that, or is just like the area? No, you know, I was in Northern California, so it was like, it's right on the line. So I just, you know, oh, stepped okay. over and I was, yeah. <laughs> And it's nice right like, across the, with the weather. Right across the, mm -hmm. the weather's nice. Right. I'm like an hour from Lake Tahoe. I got mountains all around. So oh. nah, chill. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, yeah. so everybody's now, now been California, invited. California either. That's true. No parking days. We've all been invited out to uh, Sparks, Nevada. Awesome. To go hang out because you've bought a really nice house. We can already tell from what's around you that you bought a really nice house. So everybody to Mark Yaffe's house. Let's hear it again. Mark Yaffe, everybody. Now we've got a special guest we're going to ask a question to. Uh, next week, uh, Mr. Joel Madison will be on. Uh, Yay! So let's talk to Joel. So, Joel, what was wrong with your camera? You kept rubbing on it like, uh, like oh, uh, it was, it sounded like somebody scratching a squirrel. What was going on? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I didn't notice I was doing that. I was kind of going uh, from, from uh, speaker view to uh, full view of everybody. And I guess when I touch okay. it, it it's right by the microphone. Yeah, it felt oh, like the muffler was dragging. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what's that? Somebody's crippled on that paper. Well, next week, Joel Madison will be here. Up there for everybody, Joel Madison. Thank you. I'm going to write some jokes by then. Thank you. Yeah. I haven't. Why would you? <laughs> okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do something special right now. I'm going to go to Steve Goody, uh, and he's going to talk about something. What we're doing, and I'll talk for a second first. Uh, okay, Steve Goody and I continue. have a premiere coming up August 15th. What is that, Steve? Well, we were supposed to be at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival uh, through most of August. And we're very excited about it with our Halloween show and our Halloween album that we made last year. And then it turns out there's not going to be a Fringe Festival this year. For the first time in 70 years, they canceled it because Brad and I were going to come. Yes. <laughs> then it turns out there's this, there's this virus that has something to do with why they canceled it. So now they're doing a, a modified, limited version of the festival online and they've asked all the people who are going to perform at the regular festival to contribute something so that's what we have made and we'd like to show you a one minute sample of that isn't that right brad that is exactly right should i go ahead and show it now sure okay here it goes in every neighborhood in every town there's a spooky house Ooh, eagle this is not my message Vampire's ball is a swanky affair. Master, I brought the shovel. And did you bring my latte? Yes, master. Skim milk, true splendor. Good, Igor, good. Let's get started. Oh, yes, Igor, yes. Raise the platform. Come inside. So there you have that. Let's hear cheering from everyone. So, uh, so back to me as I say, so what's going on here is uh, if you saw that, and that'll be available soon, uh, that you can see that one minute preview, but the show is uh, about 12 or 13 minutes our regular show is an hour, and we've taken some of the greatest stuff, and we've done videos for it. And you can see it, and you can uh, – what else can they do, Steve? They can, they can listen to it while they see it. 
And they can they listen can, to it while they see and it. Watch it again, it is, and then watch it while they listen to it. And if they want to, they can purchase CD, the CD for their very own. Ooh. And uh, you'll see at the end of the video, you can buy tickets for the video you saw, which is weird. But uh, <laughs> but it literally, I'm. It's so silly and so fun, and it's the proudest thing that I've ever done. So I really hope everybody will go see it and keep in touch on that. So Steve, were you going to do a song? Only if you want me to. We're running a little late. Maybe we don't need a song. We're running way late. So yeah. let's, let's talk for next to the week. crowd. Let's do it next week. Okay. Right. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I usually go to the control room and tell you stuff now, but I'm going to tell you right here. Uh, first of all, Mark Yaffe, Martha Christian, Steve, me, Jeff Shaw. You can go on any platform that you listen to comedy, music, Spotify, Amazon, and you can find us. And you listen to all of the great stuff that we do. Steve has a million songs out there. Martha has the most beautiful stuff you've ever heard in your life. Uh, Mark, Martha, Martha, I said, said Martha Mark. has the most real stuff. Mark said. is beautiful yeah. too. But Mark has some of the funniest albums you'll ever hear. Please go listen to them. You can get my books. You can get all this stuff. That is the best way to support us in this time when none of us have worked in 17 weeks. <laughs> so uh, please do that. And other than that, hey. We're going to drop off Facebook as soon as it is, but then if you want to stick around and talk for a second, I'll move to the control room, and anybody who wants to hang out and talk about nothing, we will. So play the Thursday song because it's, it's our favorite song. It's Go. the Thursday song. Happy Thursday, everybody. Happy Thursday. Have a very merry Thursday. It's a special time of week when Thursday bells are pealing and life no longer seems so bleak. Let's open up our presents and carve our Thursday goose and wait for Father Thursday to arrive upon his moose. You know, we try to incorporate all of the wonderful family traditions that people associate with Thursdays. Thursday comes but once a week, but do not shed a tear. Cause there are more than 50 Thursdays packed in every year. And every single one of them is full of mirth and glee. So stuff your face and break some wind and join the reverie. Have a very merry Thursday. Put on your orange fez. And decorate the Thursday tree with milk bone spam and pez. Once you've curled your mustache and donned your Thursday clothes, I'll catch you neath the mistletoe and punch you in the nose. Merry Thursday. Merry Thursday.